Hello friends, uh, welcome to another topic on hemostasis. Today we are going to discuss coagulation cascade. Before getting into coagulation cascade, we should know what is hemostasis. In last lecture, we discussed the mechanism of hemostasis. So I am not going to get into a lot of details, but let's quickly revise whatever we learned in the last lecture. Because this coagulation is the process in secondary hemostasis. So we saw hemostasis in two parts, the mechanism as primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. Primary hemostasis means just making a plug of platelet, whereas secondary hemostasis means strengthening that plug of platelet so that the clot will be formed. Let's see whatever we learnt in last lecture. Say, this is blood vessel. I'll draw a bigger one. Say, this is your blood vessel. And here the blood vessel is there. Blood vessel is made up of endothelial cell lining the wall of blood vessels. These are what endothelial cell which are lining the wall of blood vessels. Okay. And then just below those endothelial cell there is what? There is basement membrane of endothelial cell which is made up of collagen. Now this is collagenous basement membrane of endothelial cell okay and then there is what there are muscles smooth muscles lining the endothelial cell the smooth muscle cells which are lining the endothelial cells so this is basic structure of vessel wall this is wall of blood vessel i'm drawing only one side wall a similar structure will be present on this side okay so this is wall of blood vessel. Now, what's going, going on here? There is some injury now. Some injury is happening. That will disrupt the skin and then that will disrupt this blood vessel beneath the skin. Fine. But what this blood vessel is containing? It has circulating particles. It's constituent like RBCs, WBCs, platelets. Okay. I will draw just platelets. We are concerned with platelets primarily. Okay. So these platelets are circulating there and platelet has what? Granules inside. There are alpha granules and delta granules. If you remember, we saw this in detail in last lecture. Okay. So I am taking it fast. So there are what? There are some receptor. So these receptors are 2A, 2B and 3A receptors, 2B, 3A receptor and there are other receptors, these are 1A receptor, these receptors are 1A receptor, okay, so 1A, 2B, 3A are the names of these receptors present around platelet and platelet has granules, oval is alpha granules, this delta D shaped is beta granule, it is like sac, so it is D sac okay so these platelets are circulating here there are a number of platelets and platelets are very small in size they are two to three micrometer in uh, diameter as compared to RBC they are very small so they are circulating in much amount and they are circulating with blood and blood is in liquid form you know blood is liquid so these particles platelets are flowing around uh, flowing inside the intravascular compartment so just to be in intravascular compartment, they should not stick to endothelial cells or blood vessel wall. They should not come over here. Okay. But whenever there will be injury, they will come here. Okay. Just like if injury is happening, many platelet will come and seal that place so that the bleeding should stop. That we call hemostasis. The sealing of bleeding point in the blood vessel by constituent of blood especially platelets is called hemostasis now these platelets are circulating with blood now this wall is intact okay and this wall secret what no2 and this wall secret no2 and prostacyclines pgi2 and these two are responsible for vasodilation as well as not allowing platelet to stick here is it clear? And that means whenever the good endothelial cell, healthy endothelial cells are there, 
they will never allow the platelet to stick here they will never allow blood to clot okay so this blood is flowing in liquid form the platelets are flowing along with the blood in the direction of blood okay but say if the endothelial walls are injured for example injury is happening to me skin is getting injured the blood vessel under the skin will be injured so this part say this part is injured for now okay now what's happening here the injured part will not have endothelium so the prostacycline and no2 that is produced by the healthy endothelium will be lacking in injured part so it will decrease here or will not be there fine so their function will not be done here here what is the function vasodilation so will this vessel be dilated or more no it will vasoconstrict one then this prostacycline and no2 has function not to allow platelet to adhere here but if this is not here the no2 and pgi2 is not here then platelet will start adhering that is called platelet adhesion but this endothelial cells when broken produces one more factor that is called bw8 von willenbrand factor and that von willenbrand factor comes and attaches to what to this collagenous part look here it is collagen and endothelium is disrupted due to injury and this collagen is exposed now this remaining collagen actually even collagen is getting disrupted but endothelium get disrupted to more because they are delicate structure now this collagen has some index there where this von willenbrand factor v w f von willenbrand factor are synthesized by damaged endothelium okay they are also coming from platelet let's see it ahead how they are coming from platelet now just for now remember they are coming here from damaged endothelium this damaged endothelium will produce vwf von willenbrand factor which will act as a glue glue for platelet to attach here actually when there is no no2 prostacycline platelets are coming here but they should have some surface to stick on now this is what surface to stick on on one side this bw factor adheres to attaches to collagen on other side this bw factor will attach to which receptor to to one a receptor to one a receptor of platelet so here the one a receptor will be attached this one a receptor will be attached and likewise there are many platelets which will come here and they will attach with the help of one a receptor is it clear now these platelets once attached to vwf factor to the collagen okay with the collagen with the help of vwf factor and one a receptor they start changing in their shape now this process is called platelet adhesion because they are adhering so the first step in primary hemostasis this is all about primary hemostasis okay is adhesion platelet adhesion adhesion okay then what will happen they will change in their shape they will change in their shape once they are adhered they will change in their shape they say they are changing in their shape like this they are distorted fine fine and the granule inside them just degranulate because of pressure on changing the shape the granules degranulate and these granules will release what alpha granules that are oval granules will release when one willenbrand factor and one willenbrand factor and fibrinogen fibrinogen okay fibrinogen and the delta d granules are like sac s a c so s for serotonin what is serotonin it is going to be vasoconstrict it is vasoconstrictor whereas a for adp adp is will help in platelet activation and degranulation it is now activation it will help in uh, granulation sorry platelet 
uh, aggregation not granulation so it is helping in platelet activation that is changing the shape and next stage will be platelet aggregation so adp calcium c for calcium it helps in this is important as we are going to discuss about coagulation cascade this calcium which is released from activated platelet will act or form basis of this coagulation cascade this will activate this coagulation ca cascade okay so this calcium is very important to remember coming from d sacs or delta sacs of platelet is it clear now after activation this activation and degranulation okay this was what next step activation and degranulation is it clear now this other receptors 1a is already utilized to attach to the vwf factor the 2b and 3a receptors will become active now this 2b and 3a receptor will become active here this 2b and 3a receptor will become active and they will attract other platelet to attach to them they will form base for the other, other platelets okay so other platelets will come and attach to them they will activate again other platelets will come and attach with them so like this there will be what a collection of platelet around this injured area is it clear this is collection of platelet and this attachment of other platelet to pre-existing platelet is called platelet aggregation and this is next stage this is what platelet aggregation now i'll just write aggregation it's called aggregation fine so in this way the primary hemostasis is like platelet adhesion due to decrease in no2 and no2 and prostacycline pgi2 then activation and degranulation and then aggregation due to activation of this 2b and 3a receptor so likewise this plug is formed now this is what plug platelet plug which is formed in what primary hemostasis i'll erase it now this is formed in primary hemostasis this plug is weak this plug is not strong we give example of what bricks when we are putting bricks without cement above one another they are not strong we need cementing material to hold the brick strongly so that the wall should be strong now these platelets are coming together but they are not strongly bound so this is called plug platelet plug which will not be there to seal the place because it can dissociate soon as they are not strongly bound so this plug is made stronger with the help of fibrin mesh work that is fibrin mesh work fibrin net like structure these are cementing material it will hold the platelet together say this is fibrin mesh this is fibrin mesh which will hold these platelets together you can say this is fibrin mesh and this fibrin mesh is being formed in which part of the process it is being found in secondary hemostasis secondary hemostasis and once this fibrin mesh is formed in secondary hemostasis this plug become strong and then we call it clot it's called blood clot a strong platelet plug or we can call it primary hemostatic plug and the stronger plug is called secondary hemostatic plug there are other name used secondary hemostatic plug once it is made stronger with the fibrin mesh now in secondary hemostasis this platelet plug which is weaker is being stronger with the help of fibrin mesh how this fibrin mesh is formed this fibrin mesh is formed from fibrin strands and this fibrin strand, strands means string like structure, a string will make mesh and this mesh will hold this platelet together and the strands are made up of, the strands are what, polymer, multiple unit will make string, the single unit is fibrin and this fibrin is made from fibrinogen, fibrin made of fibrinogen, so how this fibrinogen will be converted into fibrin mesh or fibrin 
okay because fibrin are going to make fibrin stand so how this conversion is going to be there the fibrinogen will be converted into fibrin this fibrinogen is soluble that means it is present in the blood it is coming from liver as well as it is made from active platelets if you remember degranulation alpha granule produce vwf as well as fibrinogen so it is coming from platelets as well as from liver so this soluble it is soluble it is present in the blood but this needs to be insoluble so as to make this platelet stronger because if it is soluble it will not hold platelet it will dissociate so this fibrinogen which is soluble is made insoluble the soluble fibrinogen is converted to insoluble fibrin in the process called coagulation and which is in secondary hemostasis the fibrin meshwork is formed in second hemostasis so the coagulation is the process of making soluble fibrinogen insoluble is it clear and now this is done with the help of coagulation factors factors and these are coagulation factors which will bring out this change so we are going to study about coagulation cascade that is a series of event of coagulation factor which will be activated a series of activation of coagulation factor which will cause this ultimate change are you getting the basics behind the concept the fibrinogen which is soluble in blood is made insoluble with the help of coagulation factor and that cascade the series of event through each and every coagulation factor will activate other one and that will ultimately bring out this change to form mesh work is it clear so our ultimate target is fibrin mesh so that we need what need fibrin and this is done in secondary hemostasis so let's see what is coagulation cascade so you must have got this the first thing this happens in what secondary hemostasis the second thing this coagulation factors are made in liver they are made in liver and third thing what is coagulation here what is going to be done a uh, insoluble soluble fibrin soluble fibrin fibrinogen soluble fibrinogen is converted to insoluble fibrin and that insoluble fibrin will join to form fibrin strand ultimately fibrin mesh now let's start with this that how this fibrinogen are going to be converted into fibrin and for that what we need we need coagulation factors and this coagulation factors are made where in liver now this is your beautiful liver here it is your beautiful liver and what is going to do oh my liver is not that round so this is liver it going to release that factors in blood circulation how many factors 12 factors will be there okay so this 12 factors like first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh then this is eighth factor then that there will be nine factor then there will be tenth factor then there will be eleventh and there will be twelve factors like this all twelve factors are released into blood by liver and they are circulating in the blood but they are not active they are inactive so to make this fibrin no gene fibrin these factors needs to be active and how these factors are going to act to each other what will start the event that coagulation cascade and what will ultimately do this change let's see that coagulation cascade now so i just erase this plug for now okay you must have got this concepts so you know that there are now platelet plug only platelet plug is present so this platelet plug this is what the platelets 
which are attached with this what one million one factor with the help of which receptor with the help of one b receptor so this is one b receptor which is attaching the platelets and these platelets are regenerated they have changed in shape you know and they have aggregated with each other okay now and they are aggregated with the help of what receptor 2b and 3a receptors so this is what the platelet plug is there now this platelet plug needs to be made stronger with the help of coagulation fibrin mesh should be formed around that so coagulation these are what 12 factor which are generally present in blood and made in liver they are released in circulation okay now the factor 12th start this change factor 12th is being activated in intrinsic way intrinsic mean internal way it does not require any extrinsic factor like injury okay then there is something inside the blood which is going to coagulate through this pathway with the help of starting with the help of 12th for example if i am taking out my blood in the test tube it's gonna coagulate you know a blood in the test tube is gonna coagulate so how this coagulation when the blood is not present inside the vascular compartment it is coagulating how it is coagulating? there is something inside the blood which are which is making it to coagulate it is not some external factor a blood in a test tube or blood outside the body is coagulating without any contact with the environment so there should be something inside the blood and that we call intrinsic pathway a pathway which is something inside okay and second one once there is some there is, there is some injury then that will cause coagulation too so that is called extrinsic pathway the something factor due to external uh, external component like injury injury is what external thing so what is that difference is what let's see say intrinsic pathway is activated due to one once there is non endothelial surface in the body somewhere say there is no endothelium due to either injury internal injury due to toxins like bacteria you can say or activated platelets even say these are activated platelet these are our activated platelet you know these are activated platelet these will start send some signals for 12th factor to be active there can be some bacteria viruses or bacteria say there can be some viruses or bacteria or there can be surface which is non endothelial that is collagen this is collagen a collagen surface okay so anything like collagen non endothelial surface means self only collagen activated platelet bacteria or viruses and you can say clay clay means what clay just because because clay can activate it actually clay is not present internally it is something external factor but whenever we are going to test this pathway in lab we add clay and clay activate the blood coagulation factor it clot the blood okay so there are factors that can clot it intrinsically the factors are non endothelial surface so whenever there will be non endothelial surface it can be even due to injury okay injury can activate both intrinsic and extrinsic pathway fine so non endothelial surface but bacteria or there's uh, toxins will activate intrinsic fast pathway so non endothelial surface like uh, uh, there can or there can be bacteria or viruses or there can clay clay is just because intrinsic pathway is seen to be activating when the clay is added to test tube so that's why clay is taken one of the factor for activating this intrinsic factor pathway so all these factors non endothelial surface so whenever this factor 12th comes in contact with non endothelial surface this will start a series of event it will first of all activate what factor 11th and that factor 11th 
when activated this is called factor 11th a this will activate factor 11th this one 11th okay i'll draw with this so this will activate factor 11th is it clear and the, once the factor 11th is activated is called 11th a the activated factor is called 11th a every factor coagulation factor when activated is denoted by prefix a okay so i am going to do this 12th factor will activate due to this non endothelial surface and all like bacteria viruses so that is called 12th a which is activated then it will activate 11th factor and it will make it 11th a fine now this 11th a will activate sorry 12th yeah it's this is 11th yeah 11th a will activate 9th factor 9th a so it will activate 9th factor and this 9th factor will activate with the help of factor number 8 with the help of factor number 8 it takes the fact, help of factor number you can say i just write all the things that are essential for this conversion like uh, this 11th a will activate factor 10th this factor 10th is very important okay and this will require what it will require calcium we saw that calcium coming from activated platelet it will re require phospholipids phospholipids and it will require factor here it is 12th 11th and it is 9th so it will require factor 8 it requires factor 8 in the presence of factor 8 means with the help of factor 8 and calcium and phospholipids it get converted into factor 10th now here the common pathway starts i will write this factor 10th like this 10th here the common pathway starts this is all extrinsic pathway this is called extrinsic pathway denoted with this this is extrinsic okay now this extrinsic pathway is there now this factor 10 is formed this factor 10 with the help of factor 5 with the help of factor 5 form factor 2 that this second factor is called prothrombin and this factor is called prothrombin and this prothrombin gets activated to thrombin so 12th a is what thrombin so 12th is thrombin so with the help of factor 5 this factor 10 activate prothrombin that is factor 2 to 2 second a that is thrombin now this thrombin is going to bring the change it is going to make fibrinogen to fibrin the last change of coagulation cascade which is important is done with the help of prothrombin converting into thrombin that is two way the thrombin is going to convert fibrinogen and the fibrinogen to fibrin which is factor one the first factor fibrin okay first a on activation it is a so this first a is coming from 2a 2a means thrombin second factor was prothrombin which is activated to thrombin it is converting fibrinogen that is first factor to first a activated form that is fibrin fibrinogen was what soluble whereas fibrin is insoluble now there is one more factor this fibrin is going to make strand now how say this is the fibrinogen the structure of fibrinogen it has a protein piece on its head it has the piece of protein on its head so piece of protein on its head which do not allow it to stick to each other okay this piece of protein on its head do not allow them to stick to each other this fibrinogen is insoluble 
sorry soluble soluble because they are separate they are soluble they are like monomers now they are going to this thrombin thrombin means 2a is going to activate this fibrinogen to fibrin means what it is going to do this thrombin that is second a factor is going to remove this extra piece of protein this extra piece of protein is removed and this is what the final fibrin is like and this fibrin has no now protein cap this cap is gone so they can attach to each other now they are attaching to each other they are attaching to each other and these monomers when attached to each other they form fibrin strands fibrin strands and these strands are what insoluble or what fibrin even was insoluble okay because it is attaching to form fibrin strand and this fibrin strand will form fibrin mesh fibrin mesh is it clear and this fibrin mesh will wrap around this platelet plug which is formed in primary hemostasis to make it strong is it clear now so this pathway is getting activated due to some internal factors so it is called intrinsic pathway and this is common pathway for intrinsic and extrinsic from 10th onward let's see how so this intrinsic pathway this intrinsic fact pathway is from 12th a to last fibrin formation of fibrin this is intrinsic pathway now if that test tube is added with some tissue factor you can say uh, i'm taking some tissue and crushing it i'm taking someone's uh, piece of skin i'm taking someone's uh, piece of uh, you can say uh, any tissue of body from any tissue of the body i'm cutting someone's nail sorry i'm cutting someone's finger and i'm just crushing that finger i'm crushing it's something violent it sounds to be violent but it's not like that i'm just clearing concepts like this i'm crushing some tissue and adding it to that test tube containing blood okay then it is observed that it is again coagulated even without any intrinsic factor being active even without any intrinsic factor being active that is again coagulated how this happened so that factor is called tissue factor it is coming from tissue so when endothelium is getting injured it releases some i'm just going to erase it now this injured endothelium is going to release some tissue factor and this is called factor 3 third factor so this third factor is tissue factor tissue factor okay so it is released from damaged endothelium it is not coming from liver all other are coming from it is coming from liver but when endothelium is damaged it is coming and being active so this tissue factor is coming from damaged endothelium so this third a active tissue factor factor activate factor number 7th which is called thromboplastin so it is 7th a and it is seen that this 7th a can activate this 10th this 7th a can activate this 10th as well as it can activate 9th also but i am not confusing you so this 7th a can activate the coagulation pathway from 9th a or 10th a so these factors 10th a will be activated and the coagulation will be done 10th a will activate prothrombin to thrombin that is second a thrombin will bring the change from fibrinogen to fibrin so in this way there is some extrinsic factor is added here so this is what intrinsic and this is what extrinsic so these two pathway are going to operate together whenever there will be injury there will be both the pathways will be operating because there will be tissue factor as well as non endothelium and collagen will be exposed so these factors will be there so non endothelial surface intrinsic factor can activate even in the presence of bacteria viruses any non endothelial factors inside the body that means it does not require injury to take place that means tissues where are, which are getting crushed will release tissue factor okay so if i am taking a test tube i am adding blood in it 
the blood will coagulate that is intrinsic pathway because i am not adding anything to it say i am uh, taking that blood in heparinized tube means tube containing heparin heparin is anticoagulant so i am taking it and now i am adding what i am adding it tissue crushed tissue to it tissue factor it will coagulate even after coagulation factors are being this coagulation factor inactive due to heparin heparin is blood uh, you can say anticoagulant it is anticoagulant so it will not allow to coagulate so these factors will not be active there and i am adding some tissue factor it will coagulate even after adding that tissue factor though these factors are not working there fine so there is some extrinsic factor like tissue factor which is causing this pathway now this is called this is what intrinsic pathway this is what extrinsic pathway and this is common pathway in both this is common pathway in both from 10th onward it is common pathway so this is common pathway common pathway fine so we can i will present it separately now fine are you getting concepts is it clear for you fine so now how this pathways are working let's see once again without getting confused you got it that coagulation factors are coming from liver they are working in coagulating that is forming insoluble fibrin from fibrinogen that is coagulation and then we saw that it is secondary hemostasis where this is plug is made stronger with this fibrin mesh is it clear now so we have seen intrinsic pathway then we have seen extrinsic pathway okay and then we saw common pathway so let's saw this common pathway here common pathway so in intrinsic pathway what were the factors any non endothelial surface i'll write with different color any non endothelial surface surface or it can be bacteria or virus or it can be what it can be clay or it can be activated platelet platelet any of this factor which are intrinsic factor are going to activate this so first factor that will be activated is 12th 12th factor to 12th a is it clear i just write with the simple uh like the 12th factor will be activated then it will activate what 11th factor this is like extrinsic oh, just get it like uh, extrinsic intrinsic and then common extrinsic intrinsic and then common path like this fine so this is common here it's common pathway fine now 12th factor will be activated due to this and it will activate 11th factor 11th factor will activate 9th factor 9th with the help of 8 with the help of 8 if you remember calcium phospholipid surface as well as this eighth factor actually calcium is responsible for all this coagulation factor to activate each other calcium hold them together okay this coagulation factor are wandering everywhere in soluble form inside the blood they should be brought together they should be hold together so calcium is acting as a hook hook okay to or handcuff to attach each other to bind each other okay so the calcium is everywhere in the coagulation cascade as well as this coagulation is going on where on the surface of platelets you know platelet plug is formed in primary hemostasis now that platelet plug has some surface platelet has surface and that is phospholipid surface so the coagulation factor needs phospholipid surface to sit it is like uh, you can take it is bed there is some bed it is bed okay 
this this is like bed and here there are coagulation factor here they are coagulation factor okay and this is like one coagulation factor so they are attached here with the help of what phospholipid phospho lipid surface surface so they are sitting on phospholipid surface the surface of the bed is phospholipid surface and this coagulation factors are hold with the bed with the help of calcium say this is calcium say this is calcium say this is calcium they are hold to this this is calcium with the help of calcium they are hold with the surface as well as they are hold with each other with the help of calcium say this is calcium okay so the calcium is going to hold them together as well as to the phospholipid surface of platelet say this bed is platelet so surface of the blade is phospholipid surface so coagulation factors need some surface to sit and something to hold them to the surface as well as to each other and then they will activate each other they will activate each other okay so once one is activated it will activate other other is activated it will activate other one is it clear so likewise these coagulation factors are present on phospholipid surface with the help of calcium they are bind to bound to phospholipid surface as well as with each other nine with the help of eight forms 10th factor 10th with the help of fifth factor activates second factor second factor is what thrombin if you remember form thrombin from prothrombin thrombin is formed after activation second factor is prothrombin but after it is activated it is it is thrombin and this is going to form first factor which is fibrin and this fibrin is formed from what fibrinogen so this is going to be formed from fibrinogen and this fibrin is what insoluble soluble fibrinogen will be acted upon by thrombin and it will activate the thrombin will activate soluble fibrinogen to form thrombin where fibrin which is first factor now this fibrin will do what it will form fibrin strand we just saw it will form fibrin strand like this okay and this fibrin strands will ultimately make fibrin mesh work around that platelet pug fine now this extrinsic pathway there is some injury a tissue fluid or tissue juice that is tissue factor is getting in that is third factor will be activated third factor will be activated it will activate seventh factor which is thromboplastin thromboplastin it is shortest it is having shortest half life this seventh factor has shortest half life okay now third factor which is tissue factor will activate thromboplastin seventh and seventh can activate tenth it can even activate seventh but now i am not confusing you it will activate common pathway so intrinsic pathway extrinsic is due to tissue factor that is due to injury is it clear so that is extrinsic now this is how the coagulation cascade is going on to make clot stronger platelet now something to uh, know about this coagulation factor what is that coagulation factor it is a protein coagulation factor is what it is a protein and every protein has amino acid you know here it is glutamic residues coagulation factor factor is what protein with amino acid called glutamic residue and this glutamic residues undergoes gamma at its gamma point it is a point on the amino acid alpha gamma beta at its gamma point it is going under carboxylation so this carboxylation gamma carboxylation called gamma carboxylation this gamma carboxylation causes negative charges negative this gamma carboxylation causes negative point on this protein that is glutamic residue this is called alpha carboxy glutamate this is called alpha carboxy glutamate which carries negative charge which carries negative charge why it carries negative charge because this carboxylation point has negative charge and that's why it can attach with calcium you know coagulation factors need calcium to attach with each other as well as 
phospholipid surface we just saw the example of soap uh, bed here you know drug called warfarin there is a drug called warfarin which is anticoagulant used in atrial fibrillation means whenever there is a tendency of clot formation even in dvts that warfarin acts here it avoids that carboxylation so warfarin does what warfarin do not allow this carboxylation so that what will happen there will be no negative charges on protein that is glutamic residues so clotting factors cannot sit on phospholipid, phospholipid surface as calcium is not going to bind them and will not be binding with each other too so that's why warfarin acts by avoiding or not doing this uh, not allowing to do this gamma carboxylation is it clear fine now this platelets this gamma carboxylation of some plate some co coagulation factor is vitamin k dependent so i'll just the seventh second ninth and tenth these are what vitamin k dependent gamma carboxylation means coagulation factor this vitamin k dependent coagulation factor whenever there will be deficiency of vitamin k they will not undergo gamma carboxylation and this coagulation pathway will fail is it clear so if there is deficiency of vitamin k and the bleeding is going on you should supplement with vitamin k is it clear so this is vitamin k dependent gamma carboxylation of this 9 7 10th and second coagulation factor now there is some test to evaluate the quality and quantity of this pathway this intrinsic pathway is evaluated with the help of PTT it is also called APTT that is activated partial thromboplastin time and ACT this intrinsic pathway is evaluated with the help of PTT and ACT activated plotting time or clay is added here here clay is added we saw the one of the factor for this intrinsic is clay so it is seen that how much time it is taking to clot the blood means to form the fibrin and from ptt partial thromboplastin time as well as activated clotting time we can estimate about time being taken for coagulation to takes place through intrinsic pathway how partial thromboplastin because partial thromboplastin means it is not thromboplastin it is one factor that can activate intrinsic pathway so partial thromboplastin time and act and the drug that can hamper this is called heparin it is anticoagulant which act here and prolong ptt and apt because it is going to act on which pathway intrinsic pathway fine now here the thromboplastin and tissue factors are there so there is test called prothrombin time okay so this prothrombin time pt is evaluated prothrombin time is the time taken after adding tissue factor here the tissue factor is added to sample and coagulation factor is studied that means extrinsic coagulation factor means the time taken to form thrombin or prothrombin is called prothrombin time and it is study for what for extrinsic pathway because it is being added to tissue factor but prothrombin time is never uh, ideal for everyone similar for everyone okay there is no one single value that can be assigned so internationally INR INR is considered one of the test so we order PT INR together most of the time INR is what INR is patients pt upon upon mm, obtained pt obtained pt that means the patient's prothrombin time which can be uh, up to uh, 12 to 14 second up to an obtained prothrombin time that can be anything okay depending upon the defect in the coagulation pathway so this is patient's prothrombin time upon the result resultant prothrombin time 
so this is international normalized ratio inr for international normalized ratio which gives value standard value okay it is 1.5 normal value is up to 1.5 if the value is going beyond 1.5 then there is some problem in extrinsic pathway is it clear and the drug just a minute the drug that is going to act here is warf we just saw the warfarin is a drug which will be acting on intrinsic pathway is it clear and one rare thromboplastin time one rare uh, investigation to evaluate common pathway actually it is not done routinely so i won't discuss it now the important are ptt or act the drug called heparin can derange intrinsic pathway and prolong ptt and act drug called warf can prolong extrinsic pathway and derange pt inr is it clear so in this way you can evaluate the quality and quantity as well as the efficacy uh, sorry as well as the duration that is how this coagulation is going on is it prolonging is it early so this quality can be determined with the help of this investigation so this is all about coagulation cascade so we saw how the plug is made strong with the help of fibrin mesh which is formed from fibrin strand ultimately form fibrin after the removal of cap protein cap from fibrinogen this is done with the help of second coagulating factor it is thrombin and now the coagulation event of clotting factor that comes up to thrombin through intrinsic pathway as well as extrinsic pathway so this is all for today thank you very much